Hey guys, Rob here, 3D Printscape. So I've done several videos showing you how to create custom firmware uh, using BS code and kind of going through the process manually. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to use the Marlin Auto Build plugin. Uh, there are a couple little things that make it somewhat easier in some aspects for somebody getting started. Uh, I typically don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think it's still worth going over. And for those people who are just making a couple changes or just getting started with a Kratom custom firmware or using VS Code, it could be a really good option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to the computer, uh, kind of show you how to install VS Code, install all the plugins you needed, this guide is really geared more towards somebody who hasn't really worked with VS Code or uh, creating custom firmware uh, much, uh, so it's really more of a getting started guide. If you'd like to see a more in-depth guide, you can go and leave a comment below and let me know what you're looking for and I'll try to create something. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Alright guys, so we're here at the computer and the first thing we want to do is install VS Code. Uh, I went ahead and did an uninstall of everything I have just so we can walk through the entire process start to finish. Uh, so if you've seen me install it before, I kind of that's why. All right, so what we want to do is grab the installer for the version that we're running. So here I'm running Windows 10, 64-bit, uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. And then I'm going to grab the uh, user installer here. Uh, if you're questioning what version you have versus 64 or 32-bit, just go with the 64. Uh, most of the modern-ish machines are 64-bit. So we're just going to go in here and grab our download. Now we just want to go ahead and launch this and go ahead and double-click on it. It should go ahead and start everything up. You've got to accept the uh, license agreement here. And I didn't mention this, uh, but I will link to the URLs that you're going to need in the description below. Uh, so go to hit next after you read the license of course and then hit next again unless you're changing the location and then next and next again and install all right now that that's been installed we'll go ahead and launch it all right so here's just the uh, UI uh, what we'll do is go down to our extensions and there are a couple extensions we need to install one of them is going to be the platform IO IDE and then the other one's going to be the Marlin auto build plugin so first we'll do the platform IO so we'll just search for that and then it's going to be this top one right here so just click on it and hit install and then that's also going to install the C++ plugin. If it doesn't, you will have issues, so make sure here in a second uh, that it does show up under plugins. All right, so that should take about a minute or so to install. Then sometimes it does some stuff in the background. Uh, but if you look here, we have the new um, image here showing that it has been installed. And if we clear out our search here, we should see uh, both Platform IO and C++ installed. All right, the next thing we want to install is the Marlin Auto Build plugin. So I'm just going to search for Marlin. And then it's this top one right here. So just click on it, then hit install. And then it's going to run through the install. And then uh, you'll see this pop up when it's done. All right, now that we have our plugins installed, I like to restart VS Code. And just in case there's anything pending, it kind of just gives you a clean starting point. So I'm going to do that really quick. All right, so that came back clean. Everything looks good here. So that's really all we had to do to get uh, VS Code and our plugin set up. So now let's go ahead and download the firmware. So this is a guide from Marlin. So we're going to go to the Marlin download site. Let me go ahead and close this here. And we want to get two things. First one we want to get is the bug fix version, unless you're using the latest release. But I recommend going with bug fix. So we'll download that. It's going to just download for us in a zip. And then the other one is we want to get the configurations file. Um, so we'll just go over here to hit view download. It's going to take us to GitHub. And then we'll just go to code here and download zip. So this is going to give us the configuration starting points for everything we need. All right, with both of those downloaded, let's go ahead and open our downloads folder and extract those. So here I've got uh, our two downloads here, then VS Code. I'll just delete that really quick. So I'm going to extract both of those here. All 
All right, then I created a test folder where I'm gonna put uh, the firmware app. Uh, I just have it on my desktop, but you wanna try to get this as close to the root of your drive as possible. Uh, so I know some people create a firmware folder under uh, the C drive or D drive if they have multiple drives. Um, but most of the time, if you have a short folder path, um, using your desktop is fine. Uh, but you may run into issues with file length. So that's why I bring that up. You can get random build issues related to it where it just errors out. Uh, Windows is not very friendly with uh, long file names. All right, so from here, what we want to do is open up our Marlin Bugfix 2.0 folder and copy the contents into our test folder. And then we'll go ahead and kick off a quick build just to make sure that everything installed right. And then we'll go back over and um, add our configurations. So let's go to VS Code really quick. Um, we have to import our uh, working environment or a folder. So we can either go to open folder here or under the Marlin plugin, just open a Marlin 2.x folder. And then, like I said, it's under desktop and test. So I'm just going to open that and it's going to pull everything that we need in here. All right, and then with that done, we can just go ahead and close out of these two tabs there and then go back down to your Marlin auto build. Now we have two choices here. You can just do um, build, which will bring up your ABM panel, or you can just do show ABM panel, which is what I prefer. Um, because if you already have, if you have multiple environment types, you're gonna bring, it's gonna bring up this panel anyways. If you only have one, it's just gonna try to do an auto build. So I just go into here to uh, go through all my settings. But this is gonna change the environment type in your platform IO to INI file. Um, which if you weren't using the auto plugin, you'd have to do manually. But the first thing I want to do right here is just make sure that with the standard build, no changes, um, that everything just builds fine. So I'm just going to hit build. And as you can see here, we had a successful build. And then if we go up to this little folder here, uh, it will open up an explorer window. Uh, that went straight to where our build is. Uh, so here would be that build. Um, if you're going to be redoing that build or just did that for a test, what you're going to want to do afterwards is just hit clean. So it deletes all of that. All right, guys, uh, before we move on, I wanted to take a minute to make a note here. Um, I'm focusing this video really on 32-bit boards. Marlin Auto Build does work pretty well with 8-bit boards. You can connect the uh, 3D printer to your computer. Uh, most cases, it will auto-recognize the board and install the required drivers. And then you can actually push the firmware to the printer uh, using this upload here. Um, if it's an 8-bit board. Now you don't want to do that if it's a 32-bit board. Uh, with a 32-bit board you're just going to be using a SD card putting the file on the SD card and copying it over. But if you guys want me to get into more detail on the 8-bit version uh, I can do that as well. I just figured that at this point most people are moving towards 32-bit and that's going to be where most of the need is. Uh, but I have no problem going back and doing an 8-bit version of this if you guys want. Alright so now I'm going to do two more examples here. So one we just did was just with your generic build. Um, now I'm going to show you how to uh, upload or change the config to account for a Creality 4.2 board. And then uh, after that, we'll do one for the SKR Mini. A lot of the process is the same, but um, there are just a couple config differences and a couple things that I want to show you. All right, so let's start with the Creality board first. I went ahead and pulled up um, my firmware folder here, then my downloads folder. So let's go into configuration, um, drill into that further, go to config examples. Then we want to find our printer. There are a lot of examples of printers out here with some of the base configs. Uh, I'm going to use my Ender 3 Pro here. So I'm going to go into Creality and then Ender 3 Pro. And then we have the different boards that they have pre-made configs for. So we'll start with the 4.2.2. So what you want to do is go into that folder and then copy your config and boot screen uh, files here. Then go over to the Marlin folder under the firmware folder and then paste it. And then you want to overwrite any of the previous files that were in there. So now if you look back here, you'll see that it updated the board based on what was in the config and then it updated the environment as well. So you don't have to go back and do that manually. 
and then uh, at this point I would just create a test build again just to make sure it don't have any issues before I try to make changes. And then after you change the config out, a lot of times I get errors like this. Uh, I just go ahead and build it again and it takes care of it. All right, and as you can see, that build succeeded. So we can open this here to get our firmware. And then it would be this guy right here. We would just put this on an SD card, um, power up the printer with the SD card inserter, and it's gonna read it and pull that firmware in. So now if we wanted to make a change, um, we'll go back up to uh, just Explorer and then go into uh, Marlin. And then here's our configuration and configuration advanced files. Uh, this is where you're gonna make most of your changes at. So let's just say you wanted to update the printer name or add a BL touch. You can search for those fields uh, like here um, has the default for that version of the printer. Then you can change it to whatever, just uh, Ender 3 Pro and then uh, 3D Printscape or whatever you want to have it to uh, say there. Then you can search for BL touch and then enable that if you want. And then you got to make sure you get the rest of the settings associated as well. Uh, so I'm not going to enable that. Um, I've got videos covering that whole process, but I want to go back over to Marlin and kick off a quick build. So if we go back to Marlin here or the Marlin auto, auto build, go here and then uh, just clean the directory from before and just hit build. Uh, so that's the process, and then as soon as this finishes, I'll show you what you have to do if you have a SKR Mini. It's pretty much the same, uh, just slightly different files. All right, so that covers the process for your Corality board. Same thing for the 427 board. You would just use the other uh, configuration example, which would be uh, right here. Depending upon what you're trying to do, you'll want to find a config example with the printer and board you're working with. Uh, there are situations that come up where there isn't a board uh, for that printer or there isn't a config example. I have made those work sometimes, but you're getting into uh, really uncharted territory. Uh, so I don't want to cover that in a video or be liable for something like that if it goes wrong. So uh, just keep that in mind. You want to match your board uh, to the firmware configuration that you're working with. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the SKR Mini as well. Uh, it's going to be the same thing. We just want to get those configs. So let me grab uh, my Marlin folder here. We're going to copy our configs over and overwrite what is there. And the main reason I want to do this one is because it's a popular one and there is uh, one thing that stands out. All right, so now let's go ahead and clean this. All right, so if you didn't have the configuration file open, uh, it's going to update everything here with the new values. But because we were making changes before, we have to close out of that and make sure that it overwrites that file. So I'm just copying the files over again just to make sure that it's overwriting it. Um, it did not overwrite it because I had it open, therefore it was locked as read, me, uh, read only and wasn't able to do anything, so it didn't update it. The main thing I wanted to point out here is by default, uh, Big Tree Tech's firmware package that they have on their GitHub page is using uh, this environment. And that's caused a lot of issues because it overloads the memory that's available pretty quickly and the SKR boards support the 512. So you're going to want to build with this. Uh, so you just go ahead and hit build. Uh, it should give us a quick test build. See that everything works right initially before we make any changes. And that's always an optional step, but I highly recommend it because if you get a failed, uh, this is because I switched boards again, so I'll kick it off again. Um, if you get a fail when you're building something and you don't know that the firmware you started working with was good, you have more to troubleshoot. So just kicking off a quick build to begin with before making any changes gives you a known good starting place when you go to edit the config. And there we go. And then we can go ahead and hit that again. And that's going to give us our actual firmware file, which is going to be right here. And you can just copy that over to your SD card. 
Now again, you don't want to use upload on 32-bit boards. It, uh, it's for something completely different. Um, for the 8-bit boards, it'll actually upload the firmware. And again, I can cover that in a different video if you want. Uh, and then here, if you're trying to make any configuration changes, uh, you'll just go into uh, the firmware here and go down to your configuration file and make said changes. And then I have videos covering all the changes you'll need to make for the BL Touch uh, that I'll link to in the description below. Uh, but if you have any questions about this process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord. That covers the process to get started with uh, Marlin Auto Build plugin. It's a pretty neat little program. It helps you uh, set some of your environment details, things like that. And it just makes it easier for uh, somebody who's just getting started to uh, just get a quick build going. If you're looking to make a lot of changes, you're still going to have to dig into the configuration file, so none of that's really the same. It just helps with the build aspect. If there are any videos you guys would like to see me make, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord and let me know. Thanks.